Hey, good morning and welcome to Breakthrough Walls. I'm Ken Walls and I am your host and I have an unbelievable guest on today. This guy is, I, I mean, here, I'll show, he, he, he's the author of Three Feet from Gold. He's done, I'm, so many books, so many things. There's no way I could, could give this guy enough credit for what he's done. So let me welcome Greg Reed to the show. Greg, welcome to the show. And then the crowds go wild. Yeah! <laughs> That's so awesome, man. So, so Greg, I created this show um, to give back to the world on a mm -hmm. on a bigger scale, and and it's all about helping people have a breakthrough. And I understand you know Sherry Gideon's. Oh, absolutely, she's amazing. I love Sherry. She's one of my dearest friends. She's amazing. She's the one that connected us. As a matter of fact, Woo yeah. that's yeah. the way it is. We're always usually one quality connection away from everything we want in life. That's uh, I know, right? It's an, it's incredible. So, so look, this is your life story and and I'd like to start off with maybe telling everybody where you were born and raised and 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 how things went growing up. Wow, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that question before. So, hey everyone, <laughs> my name's Greg. I'm here in uh, San Diego, California, born and raised in the mean streets of Del Mar. I'm a coastal guy. And yeah. I live, grew up in you know, La Jolla, Benita, and now I'm up in Carlsbad, and it's uh, the best life ever. Wow. So did you go to college? Heck no. It's so interesting. When I was a kid, I was 17 years old, uh, I remember I wanted to get into sales and marketing. And I was leaving the house because I was going to get into this uh, different company. I was going to make enough dough. And my dad pulls me aside and says, son, you're never going to make a living talking to people. <laughs> oh. I, remember I made my first six figure income and I sent him my W2 and said, dear dad, remember when you said now it's a running joke in the family. Oh my gosh, man. That's incredible. So, so you got into sales and did you finish high school? Yeah, I finished high school at the lowest of my class, of course, and I, I just was not a great school guy. However, look, I've now spoken on the campuses of Harvard and some of the greatest ones, and I'm a huge fan of, uh, you know, education, especially when it comes to targeted, uh, you know, specificity, meaning I don't want some surgeon that just did some cancer stuff to, you know, not finish their education, obviously, or biotech. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, I believe the uh, Mean Streets is a, is a great teacher. I, I love that, man. I agree with you a thousand percent. So, so you, you um, got into sales, mm -hmm. did well. And where did it go from there for you? What, what, I mean, you, cause you're, look, just so everybody knows, this guy is an international rock star, like seriously. Mm -hmm. So like, where, how did it go from sales to what you're doing now? Well, it kind of is the same thing that I'm doing now. It's just in a different <laughs> thing. So a lot of people don't know my former life. So from age 20 to 40, 20 years or one whole career, all I did was I sold advertising stuff. That's about all I did. I had one job my entire career and ended up growing my own business. And then I sold it when I was 40 years old and people kept coming up and going, how did you pull this thing off and make you know a million dollars and all this thing? And I said, well, I, I listened to these quotes. I listened to these audio things. I went to the seminars and someone asked me to speak at a local university. And I must have done okay because they passed me around like a joint at a Grateful Dead concert to all the different universities. <laughs> and then a kid comes up and says, you should write a book. I go, that's a great goal. I've never really read a book. So I went you know, as far as I could and I got turned down by 268 publishers in a row. And the 269th one said, we'll do your book. Just change the title, the beginning, the middle, and the end. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious? Oh my yeah, but, but let me see. But that book, I don't know, I got one behind me. It's called The Millionaire Mentor. It ended up going on to be translated in multiple languages around the world and became a, a juggernaut for me. And from there, it led to where I am today. I've been published now in over 100 books, 45 different languages. And as you say, I even got a little star on the Walk of Fame in Vegas for being an author. And the moral of it is surround yourself with people that 
you know, play at what you'd work at. Work your strengths, hire your weaknesses. I suck at writing. I, I'm not a very good prolific guy. I'm a good gift of gab guy. So I hire amazing ghostwriters and editors that take my words and craft them in the way that people would like to read. I heard you say that somewhere and I love that. I, I love that. So you, um, <laughs> you, uh, the comments, you probably, I, I don't know if you see the comments or not, but Sherry Gideon's is saying, I love laughing with this guy. Mm -hmm. So, so um, it, it, that's, that's pretty incredible. So you were 40 when you wrote your book. Is that right? 42, 43, something like that, I guess. Yeah. And what's interesting is, is when I wrote it, everyone told me you can't write a book that way because, you know, I used big font, little words, <laughs> and I hit the little quotes in the middle and they go, you can't do that. And I had to tell a story. See, people call me the millionaire mentor because they think I mentor millionaires, but I actually work with inner city gang kids in San Diego and I happen to be successful. So I drive up in a brand new car. The kids would call me their millionaire mentor, it became a badge of honor where the uh, president of the United States wrote a letter of commendation and changed my life in my community. So it wasn't about me. The story was about millionaire mentor, about making a positive impact in other people's lives. Dude, that is so awesome, man. So along this journey of, you know, selling advertising, doing everything that you, you know, because people will see guys like you and, you know, I'm friends with Sharon Lecter. I know you are as well. And, 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 you know, you, we see people like you and, and they, they may think, well, this guy's had it easy his whole life. He's just lucky. Hmm. Oh, that's their belief system. That's fine. <laughs> you know, the whole idea for me is look, I've been blocked minus this like coronavirus outburst and, and, and the, uh, what's going on in the world. I haven't really lived through a lot of calamity in my life. You know, I mean, I haven't been to war. I haven't had shortages. I haven't had the gas gas crisis, even though it's in my lifetime, I really didn't experience it. Yeah. So I've been fortunate. I also embrace that. I mean, I have so much every time that I'm going through a challenge in life, I look back and go, man, some person was lying in a foxhole, wanting to see their you know husband and wife again and their kids. And I go, who am I to complain that I'm having a tough time making a sale or converting a website? So right. I kind of keep things in perspective. Right, right. By the way, everybody should go check out your website, gregreed.com. I'll put it up here on a ticker in a second. Um, but the hi, by the way, hi Ben Gay. You know Ben? Of course. I love Ben. He's been on the show too. He's a great man. Great man. So, so um so you you uh so but I mean so everybody goes through that's what this show is about. Is like, you know, people hit these walls in life. They they and they feel like they stay stuck there. You know, people like that, that stay stuck. They can't get around. They can't figure it out. What about those? Have you ever had a situation where you thought, I'm not getting through this. I, I don't know what to do. Absolutely. But you just adjust. Look, when I was hanging out with Truett Cathy, founder of Chick-fil-A, I go, look, I want to be a billionaire like you. What do I do? And he said, Greg, you'll stop planning so much. And I looked at him, I go, what? I go, that's against everything we're taught. And he said, last year, you had a lot of plans. I go, yeah. And he go, how did that work out for you? I go, not so good. He goes, 10 years ago, you had a master plan. He goes, you hit a goal, but I guarantee it didn't go as you directed. He said, look for and capitalize on unexpected opportunity. And that's how I live my life. If I'm sitting on my sofa and I want to get to the end of the street, I have to have stickability that I'm going to get to that goal no matter what. But I adjust and adapt. I don't over plan. I look for opportunity. Did a kid leave a skateboard or a bicycle out to make my journey short? If I'm lucky, I'll wave down a neighbor driving by and hitch a ride. Either way, I'll get to my goal. I'm just not so caught up in exactly how it has to happen. Love that, man. That is awesome. So, so you're like the modern day Napoleon Hill. And what I mean by that is I, I read that you went around literally, it sounds like the world interviewing and meeting with some of the most successful people on planet earth to compile some amazing things. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, in 1908, Napoleon Hill was gifted a letter by his you know, business icon, his mentor, uh, you know, Andrew Carnegie, and he was sent on a journey to meet all these amazing people and wrote 
the 20th best-selling book in history, Think and Grow Rich. A uh, hundred <laughs> years later to the date, the Napoleon Hill Surviving Family and the Foundation gifted me with a very similar letter and set me on my way. When then Sharon Lecter and I teamed up to write the first ever formula for not giving up, Perseverance called Three Feet from Gold, about not giving up right before the miracle happens. And yeah. from there, we went on to write more books to the Napoleon Hill Foundation for the Think and Grow Rich series. What a blessing. What an opportunity. I mean, it has been literally one of the greatest things that could ever happen to a human. And and, and I'm not, I don't want to fast forward too much, but can I, I, I use the word dude a lot. You're going to have to forgive mm -hmm. me, but, but you just seem like a good dude. Um, mm -hmm. So the wish man movie that you did with Frank. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my God. What an unbelievable movie. So, Thank so, I, and it really is. I, I watched it for the first time the, uh, like a, about a week and a half ago, I was like, man, this is unbelievable. So, so, so tell me how you've, I mean, you've, cause you also have the secret knock. You've got a lot of really cool things that you do that are amazing. Um, and, and I know Bob Donnell is a mutual friend of ours. He said he's been there and I know Sherry's been there and, um, so talk a little bit about secret knock and what, where that came from. What, what's that about? Well, when I started this journey of interviewing all these amazing people, I come back home and I tell them about it. I invited 350 people to come with me to interview all the people in three feet from gold and no one ever showed up. Oh. Everyone had a bad case of the one size. And that means I'll take action once I get the kids out or once I get the big break. Uh, but everyone had an excuse of why they couldn't come. And afterwards, everyone said, hey, how do I get to meet your friends? So as kind of a joke, I said, well, I'll bring a few of them in the living room and we can mastermind. A few showed up and I invited 12 people that actually did come. We sat around the parlor and these people just spewed some of the greatest words of wisdom I ever heard. And from there, I said, I'll do it again. And they said, well, how do they know, you know where it is or how to get in? And I just said, we'll create a secret knock. And from there, it grew organically to become the Forbes Inc. and Entrepreneurs Top uh, Business Event for you know entrepreneurs and thought thought leaders. So you cr it's a it's it's a secret like it's invitation only, right? Yeah, here's the way it works. It's so opposite of what you think. Okay, the, the realities are it costs three thousand dollars to go, and we will not tell you where it is or who will be there. So over a year ago, people signed up to come. It's in two weeks from now, and they still don't know exactly where it is or anything about it. We just tell them the city, the state, the general area to get a hotel room, and then next week we'll leak where the location is so people don't just show up. And the reason is is that we got to keep it you know specific. So when President Vicente Fox, he didn't have to worry about having, you know, secret service or things. And when we did a private Skype with Edward Snowden and in Russia, people wouldn't know where to find us. And so the whole idea is that we keep this uh, ball moving, but we bring in some of the most amazing human beings on the planet. I, I saw, I, I know Les Brown has been there. I, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to go back to the movie. So one of the things yeah. I'm doing, working a book, uh, I think it's this one, it's called Think and Grow Rich Stickability, about the power to persevere. And I was interviewing Frank Shankwitz, founder of Make-A-Wish. And at the end of the interview, I asked him a question. This is what people, I think, need to do more. They, they, they want to talk, but they don't ask questions. And I said, Frank, what was your wish? And he looked at me and said, what do you mean? And I go, well, you're the founder of Make-A-Wish. What did you ask for? And he said, no one ever asked me. I says, well, I will grant your wish. What would you like, a Lamborghini, a Porsche? What, would you, what do you want? I'll give it to you. And he said, I just want my story to be told so my grandkids know I did something. So he signed over his life rights and I looked at him and says, Frank, I'm going to make this no matter what, but just know I've never made a movie. <laughs> Six years, millions of dollars. And here we are today. We actually made the final uh, ballot for the Oscars this last year. Obviously we didn't get the nomination, but we made the ballot and we're still streaming on Netflix worldwide right now. And it is absolutely, and everybody needs to see that movie. And I, look, I, I mean, if I'm completely transparent, I didn't realize that it was you that made the movie. I watched, I'd been talking to Frank. He's going to come on the show. And I, and, and I had no idea until um, I, I think when Sherry told me and I went to your website and I'm like, 
OMG, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, this is insane. So yeah. it, that's awesome, man. It goes back to what we said earlier about work your strengths, hire your weaknesses. Look, when I want to become a best-selling author, I did not go to Barnes & Noble and found the most prolific writers. I didn't want to be a great writing author. That wasn't my focus. I went to the bestseller section and I called Mark Victor Hansen up. I, I called all these people and said, will you teach me what you did? And I duplicated their efforts and here we are today. When I went to Africa to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, I found the Sherpa that I climbed it 900 times. Wherever they put their boot print, I put my boot print. When I want to make a movie, I said, who won an Oscar? Who's the top people? And I reached out to them in Hollywood and I just kept bugging them until they gave me the secret sauce. And I started duplicating for myself. Every single thing that we want in life is already within our sphere. We just have to get off our backside again and start moving towards that direction and look for unexpected opportunity along the way. Gee, many Christmas, man. In 16 minutes, you've spent more gold than, I mean, that's insane. So, mm -hmm. so, so this, this movie, how, it just came out, right? It, like in 2019, the end of 2019. Yeah, it came out in June and oh. then we had a run in the theaters. Uh, we qualified for the Oscars through that. And then we ended up doing an amazing deal. Uh, with Vision, and they got it in all the major retailers, big box stores, and then we uh, did pay-per-view streaming. Uh, another group called Pure Flix is doing the international worldwide sales, and then Beyond Word, who did The Secret, they're doing all the personal development stuff. So it's it's just really, really one of those uh, unique things. And now I'm doing a TV show. So in fact, I'm editing. As soon as we're done with this, I'm going to that. I decided to start doing a TV reality show uh, where entrepreneurs come over and they all want access to something. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. I call it, I call it the switchboard because it connects people. These are all the connections that yeah. I've met along my journey. I mean, you have everyone from Lamborghini to princesses, the queens to all the different people inside this. And what I do is I open this up. So someone says, hey, I'm working on a clothing line. Boop, 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 boop. Here's the founder of Ugg Boots but you got to earn your right to meet with them. Oh my God. That is awesome, man. Holy crap. So, so, and it's called wake up and crush it. Yeah. But I think I'm going to call it. Holy crap. I like that name, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, a little, I get a little starstruck once in a while, man. I, I, I you're, you're incredible. So, so you, um, Gee, many. I don't even know where to go with this. So you you have this TV show. Is it on TV? Is it an internet thing? Is it both? No, it's gonna. I just filmed the pilot. So the way it works is that you film an entire show. Yeah. And it's 22 minutes, just so you know, with all the commercial breaks and things of this nature. So we're, we just created a two minute little sizzle interest reel. I'll send it to you when we're done. Don't post it yet. And awesome. then we do a five minute version and then we do a full 22 minute version. And then we send that little sizzle reel to our agent does to all the different networks from, you know, MTV to Bravo to all the different stations and see if they are interested. And then they ask for the five minute version. And then if they like that, they get the 22 minute version and hopefully buy the show. Oh my gosh, man. Okay. So high school educated, no college. I didn't go to college either. So I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, but we don't very clear. We support, endorse and recommend college for the people that it's right for a hundred percent. Absolutely. 1000%. Um, but I, I want to talk about because most not most, a lot of people think they got to have all of this education, all this to, to get to where you are. And it's just not true. Would you agree with that? Well, I just told you that's who I am. I to get to where I am for me. Yes. That worked for me. Maybe it doesn't work for somebody else. I don't have that answer. Everybody's different. The only thing I had when I was young was a mom who was amazing. And my mom, sat me down and said, Greg, you can do anything you put your mind to. And I was crazy enough to believe that. <laughs> and so I still live my life under that philosophy. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting. I'm looking behind me here is, you know, I just got a couple honorary PhD doctorates. So technically I'm a doctor, but it's really cool because uh, a group, I did a bucket list when I was, I think, 17, 18 years old. And it had 80, eight zero items on there that were impossible 
to do for me. And I sat there and had this crazy bucket list. And a year ago or two years ago, I had my final one. I only had one left. And I went to a friend of mine named Mac, who was the head of R&D for Pfizer. He's the guy who created, you know, all the different drugs and things that we use today. And I was telling him this thing that I wanted to get an honorary PhD because I never went to college. And it'd be such a great honor somehow to pull it off. I go, I guess I got to go back to school. And he says, well, you're not going to believe this. In India, there's a university it has 38 different campuses. It's like the Harvard of India. And he says the last time they gave an honorary PhD was Ted Turner, the guy who created CNN. He goes, I'll put your name in and see if maybe they'll give you one. I go, yeah, right, right. Two weeks later, he calls me up here. He goes, you're not going to believe this. He goes, they're going to give you an honorary PhD. And he goes, well, let me honor them by giving back. So I called up Tonino Lamborghini, Mr. Lamborghini. Yeah. Flew him over to India with me, and he and I toured the university structure, and we did the commencement speeches and all the different parties, and they gave he and I our uh, honorary PhD. So technically now I'm a, I'm a doctor. Doctor. Wow. Dr. Reed. That's what we, I'll, I'll start calling you Dr. Reed. That is incredible, man. Now, so, wow. And I've heard that, but I've never heard that. Uh, that that's how it worked. That's incredible. yeah, yeah. I, I did it all. I ran with the bulls. I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I carried the torch for the Olympics. I mean, just made a major motion picture. Got pumped. I mean, crazy stuff, right? Spoke at the United Nations. I mean, it was impossible stuff. Uh, and yet, at the end of the day, if you put your mind to it and you have a directive and you're not so caught up in exactly how it has to happen, everything literally is an opportunity to wait for it to unfold. Let me let me ask you a question. What what do you think? Um, what's the 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 number one thing that holds people back in life? Oh, oh their butt. Their butt. Yeah, not the one you sit on. But everyone sits there and says, "I'd go do that." But and that's what holds them back. Wow. How do they How do they change it? Well, it's interesting, you know, when I was working with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and the amazing Sharon Lecter, we realized that when people were talking about all these different projects and it came to fear, it wasn't the fear of loss. It wasn't the fear, you know, pain. It wasn't the fear of success or failure. It came down to one simple thing. It was the fear of criticism, the fear of what other people thought. And I realized that there's a bumper sticker at Disneyland. It says, what would you do if you couldn't fail? And the big question is, what would you do the moment you stop worrying about what other people thought? And the big newsflash is no one's thinking about you. <laughs> They're dealing with their own situation. Yeah. So I had that mentality. I said, man, what did you ask that you know, person out for a date? Would you start the new business? Would you try that movie? Would you do these things? And that's the attitude that I move forward with. So I don't get so caught up in exactly what other people thought. Now, here's the way that you do this. Though. I want to be very clear. One of the greatest things is called non-attachment. Detachment is horrible. It means you don't give a crap. Non-attachment means I go all in. I give it 100% of every single thing I got, but I'm not attached to the outcome. So I years of my life, everything I had, I bled for that. However, if it's not received and people didn't like, that wasn't my responsibility. My responsibility was to do the best I could do. Same thing with all these books, the same thing with the next one. So I'm strong enough that I can go all in. I can leave it to the universe and I can move on with my life without that attachment. So, and, and, you know, after interviewing 200 people on here, you, Sharon Lecter, a lot of these, the, the same people we, we both know, you know, I, th I a lot of people have heard amazing. I mean, look, I can read all the books I can do, but there's, there's something that keeps people that have heard all of this, right? They've heard a lot of this stuff. What, what it, is there a way to get these people to get freaking unstuck? Like, like, like stop using the butts. How do you, is there a way that you use to motivate people or do you just, not try with, with those. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a therapist and I don't think it's my job to try to convince anyone to be successful. That's their own thing, guys. You know, I, and I think it's kind of a fool's game to try to convince people to do something that they don't want to do or they don't feel capable or what have you. But it's the people that are willing to do something I call roots. 
I remember I called my mentor, Dave Corbin. I said, I don't know why I want success for other people more than they want it for themselves. And he says, Greg, you don't understand roots. I'm like, what does that mean? He goes, roots. Go, what the heck's roots? He goes, you could find someone who's down and out, but they're bleeding from the back of their hands. I go, why? And he goes, roots. I go, what the hell are you talking about? He says, you think it'd be in the gutter. It doesn't make a difference where they're at. We've all been there, but they're bleeding because they, they don't like being there. And I said, I don't get it. He says, you understand. They're flinging their hands out, trying to grab a handful of roots to pull themselves out of that situation. And if he goes, if you're willing to look for the people that are bleeding and they're willing to do what it takes, yell encouraging words and tell them to grab the next set of roots, eventually they'll pull themselves out and then teach others to do the same. He goes, stop trying to fix people. He goes, just look for the people that are willing to bleed. And that's what my entire TV show is about called Wake Up and Crush It. For the people that are willing to sacrifice and do the work, they're the ones I'm going to get behind. And you're having them come to your home. Absolutely. Yeah, I got a really cool place here in Carlsbad. So I figured I'd use it and it'd become a nice little tax write-off. <laughs> I've, I've seen some, some, uh, uh, I told you at the beginning that I've seen, um, I saw you do an interview with somebody that, uh, they were in your home and holy crap. It's a, and I said, holy crap again. It is a beautiful home. Beautiful. Yeah, thank, you, thank you very much. I, I wish I could take some credit for decorating, but I've had amazing people come look at it and, you know, put their eye. So moving forward here, I got to share with something because, you know, yeah. my latest discovery of this book I did, it's called, uh, that's around here somewhere. Wealth made easy. And I was interviewing people worth a hundred million to a billion dollars. And I kept finding if there was a common denominator that successful people do differently. And it came down to this one little thing. I learned from Mark Anthony Bates. Uh, now he's not a billionaire, but he's one of the most prolific people I've ever met. And he taught me something that changed my life and maybe it'll help other people. It's called C P C C P C. This is about accountability and responsibility for things that happen. Stop blaming the entire world for everything that goes on in our life and step up and say, it's my fault. I'll give you an example. CPC stands for clues, patterns, choices. So mm. let's say I go out on a first date and the woman is 20 minutes later. Boom, there's a clue. Let's go on the second and third date. They're 20 minutes late. Boom, there's a pattern. Now it's my choice whether I deal with it, adjust it, um, confront it, break up, whatever, but it's not her fault. She's just late. That's who she is. So I realized that once we start having this accountability and responsibility, things start changing. Our paradigm changes. How many times have we heard bad things about someone doing business, see them cheat our friends, then we do business with them, get cheated, and we're mad at that person. It'd right. be like angry at a snake that rattles, bites your you know, sister, and then you pet it and get bit yourself. It's clues, patterns, choices. And mm -hmm. the only thing that successful people do is we move through that process quicker than the average person. Most people are not angry that they failed in a business or they failed in a relationship. They're usually angry because they held on too darn long. So CPC gets you through so you can get to the other side as quickly as you possibly can. And this is this book out? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's a huge mega bestseller. Called What's the title? Wealth. Yeah, Wealth Made Easy. Oh, so okay. I spent three years and I went around the world and I interviewed people worth a hundred million to a billion dollars. I, I gotta tell you, going back to Lamborghini when we were in India, I go, How did you and your dad make all this money? He goes, I go, look, you've never done a commercial, all that stuff. How in the world did you do it? And he says, All you gotta do is create a product, good, or service that people will save their money to happily hand it to you. I go, what? He goes, no one's saving their money to go to your seminar, read or buy your book. He goes, but they catch in their 401k to drive one of our cars. He goes, you're not gonna spend $4,000 a night to live in your own apartment, but you're gonna go to Anaheim, California and give it to a mouse with big ears all day long because of the experience. He goes, if you can create a product, good or experience that people will save their money to happily hand it to you, you'll never run out of clients and you'll never run out of wealth. My gosh, man. Guess what book I'm buying today? <laughs> Wealth Made Easy. <laughs> Definitely. Wow, man. That uh, So, uh, okay. So, I, look, I'm I'm also paying attention to the time. I know that um, <clears throat> you like to stay around. Okay. Um, so, what's, what's uh, this TV show's coming up. You're doing the TV show. 
um, what what else is going on? What's what's coming for you? Well, Any let's talk about yeah, let's talk about the secret knock. It, it, we're two weeks away. We literally are inviting you to join us. You go to secretknock.co. It's so funny. We left the M off, so we figured no one would find us, and that it's still <laughs> it's a god. So secretknock.co. Uh, and you go apply and come play. And here's the only thing we do different than the average person. Instead of coaches, teachers, mentors, we just bring in the actual person who did what everyone else is talking about. Imagine cutting your learning curve where you jump to the front of the line. It's like going to a nightclub where they've got the velvet rope and a clipboard and you just go right to the front. That's what Secret Knock is all about. It's it's having that access. It's not about bumping yourself up to VIP status and all that stuff. Everyone's the same. And I figure if I can open up the doors of opportunity to make one connection that could cut your learning curve a decade or two, that's where I get my fulfillment from. That's incredible. And so anybody can go. Well, they have to get, to get, get fill out an application. They have to yeah. qualify that they make a good fit for us. I'll give you an example. I've spent my entire life building up these connections. Yeah. And if someone calls up and they wear a tinfoil hat and talk to dead aliens to their cat, quite frankly, I got to make sure that I can screen them away from Mr. Lamborghini who's flying in from Italy or what happened, right? right? So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty particular who we bring, but if you've got the desire, you don't have to be a billionaire. You don't have to be super uber successful, but you have to have that mindset that you're ready for it. Yeah. Because again, if you're not willing to bleed from the knuckle, if you just want to come and say, but why can't I? We have no interest in you. That's not going to make a fit. But if you sit there and go, man, I don't know what I've been stumbling, Brock. If you got, just give me one nugget and I go apply it, what could it be? That's what we're looking for. It's so funny. This is how I honored, uh, you talking about earlier, Les Brown. When yeah. I wanted to be a public speaker, I went to him and said, Les, Give me one nugget, just one thing I could do different to increase my speaking career. And he did. And I hunted him down a month later and says, Mr. Brown, I met you a month ago. I asked for a nugget. You gave it to me. I held my microphone different. Here's my results. What should I do next, sir? What's the chance of him giving me the second nugget? 100% because yeah. nobody has ever done that. Right. And so that's how I honor my mentors when I learn things is I go apply them and then fill them in later with what I learned. Wow. Nobody's ever said that on this show. You're the first one. That's incredible. Um, <clears throat> okay. I'm going to read your book and then I will definitely let you know what I apply. So that that's, I mean, look, I, I've, um, I've had a lot of people on here. You are dynamic, man. Um, so secret knock and it's a, it's a, is it a three day event? Is that correct? It's either two days or three days okay. somewhere. Eh, so <laughs> it's, it's, you're, it's, it's two days with a third kind of bonus day at my house, actually. So it's kind of, we, we just, we just added it. So it's going to be two days in San Diego. And then we decided we had a third day. So a few of them are, you know, I think it's 60, 70 people that fit here are going to come to my house and we're going to do a mastermind where uh, I started something called the Mastermind Association, where people can actually learn the Roberts Rules ways of running, hosting and maintaining a mastermind group. So you can go to mastermindassociation.com and actually become certified how to correctly run a mastermind. It's not about sitting in a semicircle and the host selling you a bunch of crap. That's not what it is. What you do is you get out of your headspace and say, look, there's a homeless guy down the street. Let's get out of our own way and how do we help that person as a collective you you focus on that one thing as a mastermind and then each person gets an opportunity chair they say hey here's my situation here's what i'm working at here's some struggles everyone goes around asking clarifying questions and then everyone goes around offering feedback and counsel and by doing that you leave with actual roadmap to do something and when you come back to the next meeting when you sit in the chair, you say, last time I was here, here's what you suggested. Here's what I did. And if you didn't follow actions, you're not allowed back in the chair. Wow. Mastermind, the being in the right mastermind group is powerful and life changing. Paramount. I, I have my own. I mean, I, it didn't sound like I'm name dropping. It's incredible. The people that we surround ourselves with and understand this, this is the hardest people thing for people to understand. The most successful people are also the most available people. If you're brand new at something, you're happy, go lucky, you're fresh, you're cool. 
If you're at the top of your field, you're happy, go lucky, you got nothing to prove. If you're in the middle, pain in the neck, you're filled with ego, you're edging God out, you're finding your own voice. It is easier to get to the founder of Remax Real Estate Corporation, a billion dollar empire, than your local Remax office down the street. Because one is filled with ego, one's filled with education. And so for myself, as I only reach out to the people that are getting the results I want, and here's the other big one, surround ourselves with people that you have respect for not people you have influence over. Oh my God. I, I'm going to just say this. Like if you're watching this and you number one, haven't shared it out, you're being very, very selfish. Number two, <laughs> go back and watch this over and over and over because the, you have dropped. Honestly, I'm sitting here, dude, I'm sitting here with these little post-it <laughs> notes trying to, trying to take notes and pay attention at the same time. Me like, too, and I'm going to remember what I need to buy at the grocery store in 15 minutes, so I, <laughs> it's all working out here. Oh my gosh, this is, a, this is a powerful interview. Sherry kept saying, you just wait, you just wait, you're not going to believe it. And she was right, oh my God. So, so. Hey, by the way, hi Jill, hi Weldon, hi everybody. Jill's my wife, so she she's she's loving this interview. Um, so, Greg, uh, you know when I was uh, I, I shared with you that I have um, I'm very transparent about my sobriety. I, I have 17 and a half years sober. Um, there was a time in my life when uh, man, I couldn't find my rear end with both hands and a flashlight, and and you know I I. Um, when I, when I first started in business, it was right when I got sober because I was like, I, I'm unemployable. <laughs> I have no other options really. So, um, but there was a period where I, after being sober for quite a while, I, I had a car repossessed in front of all my employees and that was a cool day. Um, you know, and I remember it feeling like, the worst day of my life. Like I, in that moment, I was like, you know, this guy that works for me, he's like, Hey boss, there's some dude that's looking in the windows of your SUV. And I'm like, well, tell him, get the hell out of here. And he's like, he's blocking it with his tow truck. And so, you know, I, I was like, what about those people that are in this moment, just filled with desperation and, and despair and, and they don't know where to go, what way to turn. Yeah, if you find yourself digging yourself in a hole, stop digging. That's the quickest, easiest answer. I remember calling Don Green, the CEO of Napoleon Hill Foundation, who runs the whole Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. And I called him up. It was, I think, Christmas Eve 10 years ago. And I go, Don, I go, this year's going to be different for me. I go, last year, I go, here's what I did. And he goes, well, what did you do wrong? And I go, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. And I could have done this and this and this. And I should have done this. And it felt like for hours. And it was probably just 30 seconds. And he goes, Greg? And I go, yeah. And he goes, don't do that anymore. <laughs> that was, <laughs> was that. And, and it was some of the greatest wisdom I ever heard. Because I went, huh. I go, that's. Pretty brilliant. Exactly. If you find yourself digging in a hole, you stop digging. And look, we're all going to have these moments of desperation. The idea, though, is surround yourself again with a mastermind group. Look, I surround myself with people that I call up to all the time. I got amazing people that I just pick up the phone. Everyone's got this. Look, 80% of every single thing we need is already within our sphere of influence, but we're just waiting for the perfect time to reach out. And that's today. How many times have you gone to a networking event and you found the one business card of a guy that you need to contact you wait for the perfect moment today's that perfect moment reach out and and the more i learned that we could do things with specificity that's where everything changes in our life the way i got all these interviews i didn't never called someone up and said let me pick your brain i didn't say let me take you to lunch no the answer is going to be no but with specificity everything opens so i say hey look i'm working a book it's called stickability the power to persevere i need 12.5 minutes of your time from the moment i enter your office time i leave 12.5 minutes i'm gonna ask you one question about how you didn't you know quit before the miracle happens everyone says yes in 12.5 minutes and then what happens when i'm there they usually say hey can you stick around a little bit longer you come friends and things of this nature but i realize it's that specificity and here's another thing too stop making other people do the work for you let me give an example i can't tell you how many times i walk off stage and someone goes hey man how can i be of value to you how can i you know support you how can i give back 
Now that's an awesome thing to say, but think about it. You're at making me do your work. I don't know you. I don't know what your talents are. I don't know anything about you. So imagine if I walk off stage and go, hey man, look, I'd love to add value to you. I see you on Instagram all the time. You get half a million followers. Let me make a couple cool memes for you. That's where I'm an expert at. If you like them, use them. Uh, and perhaps maybe down the road, you'll hire me to do some more. Right. So stop making me do your homework. God, are you guys getting this? I hope everybody's <laughs> getting this. That is, and because I, honestly, I've done that. I've done exactly what you're saying. I've said, hey, how can I add value to your life? How can I help you? And and I never in a million years did I think that that's, that's a problem. I mean, I don't know that I've done it recently, but I have done it. And that's an issue. You're right. It is. It's a huge issue, especially with how many calls, texts, emails that we get all the time. And and thanks, Sherry. I appreciate you like those memes. Again, I found some 20-year-old kids that make me look cool and they can take these things and craft them in a way. And Crystal takes the photo, you know, the pictures and Mike and Lloyd and all this different stuff and they craft all these cool little things. Surround yourself with people that play at something that you work at. That is the key to all things that are possible. God. You, you, dude, you have a lot of wisdom. This is insane. So, hi, hi Bob. Is a buddy, Bob? Bob, 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 Bob is. I don't know if you know this about Bob. I'm sure you do. He hates it when when somebody walks up and says, "So, what do you do?" <laughs> like, yeah. and it, it's along the lines of what you're talking about. So, I, 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 absolutely. Wow. So, um, man, Greg, I, I, I'm so Dr. Reed, I am so grateful that you, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I'm very, very grateful that you took the time. And to your point about very successful people are, are very available. Like I was blown away at how quickly you, we arranged for you to be on the show. It happened fast. I mean, days ago. And you talk to to uh, Mark Victor Hansen and to Sharon and to all these different people. <laughs> the realities are the most successful people, the most available people, just reaching out with specificity of what it is that you're looking for. Yeah. And again, I mean, I couldn't even tell you how many people reach out and say, hey, I'd like to interview you for your show. And I say, great, we, we, we'd love to do that. And then they send us a list of 30, 50 questions that they want you know, us to answer. I go, you're making me do your work. Pass. I go, I'm not going to do that. If I have to do your homework for you, that's not going to work out for me. And no. I realized the same thing when I interview other people. I show up prepared, so I'm ready to go in firing right from the beginning. My, I think I, my wife is saying you need to write a quotes book. Mm. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. It's interesting. One of my quotes um, that I uh, got shared, I think 37 million times already. It was kind of interesting about goal setting and it, it's, 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 it's pretty neat. Uh, last year, someone called me up and says, you're not going to believe it, but you made the prison system. I go, what? So I became the quote of the day in the prison system. Then I made the university system. Then I made the, the government system. So it's kind of cool when you see your quotes pop up. <laughs> and now I was in New York and I was speaking at a, a real estate convention and their banner was my, one of my quotes. And I go, hey, my name's not on that quote. So I took, I had someone go get a magic marker, and I wrote Greg Reed all over. <laughs> I go, well, hey, you gotta use my quote, knucklehead. He give me a credit for it, for God's sakes. That is awesome. So, what was the quote that made the prison system? I go look at it. Up. And so, <laughs> the, the whole, the whole idea is this: is that you know, if you surround yourself with people that are getting the results that you want for yourself, and here's a big word today everything is possible. I'll give you an example. If I want to start a brand new restaurant chain, one of my buddies is the guy who started Chuck E. Cheese. I love Gene Lanham. Amazing guy. Wow. But he did it 40, 50 years ago. I would probably go to the guy who's starting Five Guys or In-N-Out Burger, the cool trend of today's modern era, and ask them what they did. Realize it's the same thing. If I want to learn internet marketing, I'm not going to go to someone who's doing it in 2002. I'm saying, hey, who's getting the results I want for myself today? Or more importantly, tomorrow. Because a good quarterback will always throw the ball downfield so the wide receiver can run underneath it. So I'm always keeping my eye out for what's coming next. 
And by doing that, you keep your eye on the prize and you're always prepared as soon as it reaches. I, I got to tell you, you uh, your your website. So I, I've done website development for 26 years. And, mm. and that's the business I started when I got sober was I, I went like, pro at it and and your website dude like i told yeah. my, i told my wife i said come in here because that's what we do right i said come in here you got to see this guy's website and and she loved it i it's it's nice man like everybody yeah. should go check out greg reed i'm gonna put that back up on the screen too and and just so everybody knows Everything that you've talked about with the secret knock and everything else you've talked about is on gregreed.com. You can get to it, right? Yeah. And, and I, I'm going to go back to a, a funny little thing real quick before I wrap up is also the simplicity, how everything's available. You know, you talk about the house I live in. You know how I found it? Craigslist. You know, it's interesting when I wanted to make Frank's movie, I didn't know how to make a movie. I didn't know how to write the script. So I went to Craigslist and I posted an ad looking for a screenwriter. That's how I found Theo Davies who wrote, directed and produced this amazing film. And when I wanted to make a TV show, I didn't know anyone. So where did I go? Craigs. It's all around us, but yeah. everyone has an excuse. Everyone has a bad case of one size there, but everyone lets everything stop them. And it's all so accessible between Upwork, Craigslist, Fiverr, all these different things. It's a different world in which we live. So the whole idea is let's stop looking at something our greatest you know, challenge, but it might just be a greatest blessing and opportunity in disguise. That is so true, man. So true. What if somebody is flat broke? They don't have two pennies to rub together. Yeah. That's awesome. If you find a way of collaboration, look, what I did for myself is the same thing is if I was going to start a brand new t-shirt line. I would find some kid who's might be in college and they need a class project and say, Hey, build me a website, use this thing. And I'll share the profits with you. 50, 50. I'll do the design. I'll get the thing together. We'll do this thing. All you go to Etsy, you go to uh, uh, one of those uh, cafe press where it costs you nothing and you can create a mock-up t-shirt and start selling them right away. It doesn't take a hundred thousand dollars to start a business like in the old days in today's world for 10 grand, or less, you can be up and running and testing it on Facebook and do some ads and have target reach. Things have adjusted, and that's what we need to be, you know, cognizant of. Wow, I, I agree. <laughs> There's, I, I don't know. I, this is unbelievable. So, a, everybody share this out. B, go back and rewatch it because. Greg, you dropped some unbelievable nuggets of wisdom on this. I, I would, you know, I'd love to to have you back on the show sometime just to, you know, when you have new stuff coming up to promote it. And I love to help people and promote people. And 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 I don't, I just do it for, for the universal value. So, um, you know, anyway, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on and spending the time. Absolutely. So when the show comes out and you read uh, Wealth Made Easy, let's make that happen. Plus, I got another new book. This one just came out. Uh, it's called The uh, Boardroom Buddha. Uh, it's interesting. I just co-authored it with a buddy of mine, Dean Myers, will be at Secret Knock. He's the former vice president of Coca-Cola Corporation. And uh, together we just did this one. We also did The Tokens. Uh, this one is kind of cool. Uh, it came out last year, world bestseller. I mean, they're all over the place. But this is one of my favorite little nuggets. When Napoleon Hill passed away, his last book he was going to publish was called Success and Something Greater. And he never got a chance to get that published because he passed away. Yeah. So the Napoleon Hill Foundation granted it to Sharon and I, and we just came out with this one last year. It's available at all the airports and bookstores worldwide. This is an amazing read. Everyone should get a hold of this bad boy. And you guys, like, do you, is it, so it, it's his book, but you guys do some annotations or something? No, what we did is we just used the title and we found some unpublished work from Napoleon Hill. And then Sharon and I went around for a couple of years with a mastermind group and we interviewed amazing people, folks that, you know, did incredible things to tell their magic secret sauce, their magic key to success. I'm talking the founders of Barefoot Wine to the, the, the inventor of Pictionary, all these amazing people to find out what they did. And one of my favorite ones was an entrepreneur. His name was Fred. He invented the two-person jet ski and he ended up selling the patent, I think the ski do for 75 grand. 
That's it. 75 grand. A billion dollar brand. I go, Fred. I go, that's got to drive you crazy. He looks at me. What are you talking about? I go, 75 grand. You sold the patent to Ski Doo. He goes, it's a billion dollar brand. I go, that must kill you. He goes, no, not at all. I go, how can you say that? He goes, you understand. He goes, that's 75 grand. I was behind on my taxes, my mortgage. My employees were, weren't paid. He goes, I took that 75 grand. I got even. He goes, I slept clean for three weeks straight. First time in my adult life. He goes, it was amazing. He goes, I was up in the attic and I found these little metal cars. I used to play with die cast cars when I was a kid. A buddy of mine was in NASCAR. So I painted his colors on the side and his number and I gave it to him. NASCAR liked it so much. They ended up licensing the rights for only like 165 million dollars oh and my he goes, sometimes you have to do a deal in order to get through to do another deal yes amen man oh my god I, like that dude everything like i could can i just come out and hang out with you for a couple of days i'll buy you dinner <laughs> there you go. i want to pick your brain i just 12.5 minutes i know that's it I get, I get asked that so much. I put a button on my website that says, pick my brain. It's $900. Right. There you go. I love it. All right. Uh, I got to get, get going here. So it's a pleasure yeah. seeing you. Thanks for having me on. I, I really do appreciate it. You are amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on. Have yeah, an absolutely. awesome day. Hey, by the way, go to Instagram, uh, Greg S. Reed. Follow me and DM me. It goes right to my phone. I actually respond to every one of them. But don't ask me about the weather, what I ate for dinner, or any of that stuff. Just if you got a business question, need a connection, reach out. I'd be glad to do it. You're awesome, man. Thank you. Everybody follow Greg Reed on Instagram for sure. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate you. You got it. Bye. Bye-bye.